Like, if this is what the future looks like. That is so fast. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Well, she's trying something coming out of China. It's probably going to be pretty crap. We don't know. And that's the scary part. I could see myself having a car like this. Whether we like it or not, plug-in hybrids could very well be the future of four-wheel driving in this country. And sitting next to me is one of the first real examples of that. This is the BYD Shark, a plug-in hybrid Chinese manufactured 4x4 ute. Keyword being hybrid. It's got a combustion engine in it, but that's just being used as a generator. It's actually moved by its electric motors, which means you get the speed and feeling of an EV for the range and practicality of an internal combustion engine vehicle. So Liam, what do we think? You know what? I actually like the look of it. I, I like, it's kind of like got a little bit of boxiness. I was a bit skeptical, you know, some of the other um, utes that we've seen come out of foreign countries like, yeah, the GWM and the Mahindras, they kind of look a bit funky, but this thing actually looks pretty wicked. So when people think hybrid, they usually think, oh, it's got a little battery in there that makes the fuel economy better. But this has got a huge lithium battery built onto the ladder frame chassis. And then it's got a 1.6 litre four cylinder petrol engine, which is simply used as a generator to power that battery. All right. Nothing that you wouldn't expect to see in a normal uh, engine. We've got our 1.5 litre four cylinder turbo petrol. And uh, it's got all your normal stuff that you'd expect to see. But it's interesting because this is simply here as a generator. It's not really powering the car, or moving the car. Like they said to us, oh, once you get above 80 kilometers, it kicks in, but it's mainly kicking in to keep the batteries charged. It is linked to the front electric motor. So it's got two electric motors, one on the front axle and one on the rear axle. And it's got this big battery in the center. And then yeah, this little efficient petrol engine just ticks along, keeping your batteries charged up. Because obviously the idea behind plug-in hybrid is that you go home after your day at work or whatever, you plug it into your 240 outlet and you charge your car. They claim a range of 800 kilometers with the petrol engine, but if you're just using the electric battery, you get about 100 k's just off the electric, electric battery, yeah. which, which is enough for me to say, get all the way to the city and then back home. Exactly right. It doesn't sound like much, but if you factor it into your day-to-day -day driving where you're returning to your charging station, which is your home every day, then 100 k's is usually heaps. It's funny, the fuel economy when it's driving normally, uh, they reckon it's about two liters per hundred. So it just sips at the petrol just to, just to keep you uh, running along. So I've just seen on the door here, this car actually has a GBM of three and a half ton. Uh, I believe it's about 700 or 800 kilos in the tub, uh, which means the tear weight is about 2,700 kilos, which is what you'd probably expect from a car that is electric and has a bit more um, power. So, <laughs> uh, and it also has a gross combined mass of about, uh, it pretty much can tow two and a half ton. Um, which might not seem like the top of the, you know, compared to some of the other dual cab utes, but can probably tow more. It's got plenty of power. <laughs> yeah, it just becomes of how much battery that'll suck and how much fuel that'll use. In terms of a camping setup, you've got like plenty of room to put this. If you've got under that flat blame, I'm pretty sure it's 240 volt power. Oh yeah, there you go. So that's the other thing too, is like you don't need to put a dual battery system in this car. You just pull up to camp and you've got your power there. And they're actually telling us as well that you can set the battery to not go below 70%. So if you want to go away, but you don't want to lose your lithium battery getting to your location, you can keep it so that the battery will stay above 70% and it'll run off the, make sure the generator keeps it topped up. And then when you get to camp, you still got all your battery power to use. It's like the perfect thing to go camping in because it's already all sort of done for you. Like it's got the battery, it's got the, it's got the, yeah, the, it's the, pretty big tub the charging too. system. Now when Liam and I got this opportunity to come out, uh, we were in Marysville, which is only like an hour from home, to come out and actually drive an electric, none of us, either of us have ever driven an electric vehicle. Yeah, first time. And especially like this theft technology, like I didn't really care what car we were seeing today, but like <laughs> to see the new technology is exciting to me. Getting inside of it, you'll see when we're inside, it's quite surprising how good it is. Yeah. And when you hear about where it's gonna be priced in the market. Oh, insane. I think this car insane. is gonna do extremely well. <laughs> Interior wise, it's pretty special. <laughs> it's like- Well, it's like what a modern car of this era should feel like. Yeah. But it's nicer than like jumping in, you know, your dual cab. It doesn't yeah. feel that cheap either. Like I kind of thought like Chinese made, I don't, I don't know how- nah, it all feels solid. Be, it all feels pretty good. So the first thing you'll hear, or you won't hear, is that it is absolutely silent. Dead silent. And it's so it's crazy so to bizarre. think that we're moving and it's getting powered and oh. there's no noise. So, so that engine won't kick in until it needs the power, which is only like when it's really struggling or if it's above 70 k's. Yep, so pretty it. much all this sort of stuff, you're never going to hear it. No. We're in like a little uh, abandoned logging area and I want to, we want to find some we stuff find that's going to try and challenge it. Yeah, there's a couple of logs up there. We tried to, <laughs> to flex it on a log. 
I'm always worried about driving cars that aren't mine. Ah, oh, well, but and everyone saw what happened when we drove the Ineos and we got them bogged. <laughs> I'm just gonna start driving over this rough terrain, all right? Let's just Let's see. Let's see. The thing is, you gotta remember on this car, there are no drive shafts. There are no mechanical locking differentials or anything like mm -hmm. that. This is purely driven from electric motors yeah. in the front axle and the rear axle. So when it comes to like, it's all electronically traction control. Yeah, exactly to right. Get me Through over. the braking so, and the motors is how they control it. All right, let's see this suspension articulate. Independent rear suspension. Honestly, the car's got pretty good ground clearance out of the box. Like, I wouldn't see how it'd be much different than any other dual cab utes on the market right now. I just don't. It's pretty good. Have I got enough clearance? Yeah, I reckon you should be alright. Keep going. <laughs> Back wheel's off, but you're alright. Do you reckon I'll clear over the bump? Just give it a bit of momentum. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> you know what? It's funny there because you can see like with the IRS, it, obviously it picks up a wheel pretty easy, um, but, and you think you're just like, oh, I'm free spinning, but then you feel all like the brakes and the motors like all kick in and all of a sudden it's like you've got lockers. It's just like, and it just pulls you up and over. That's so awesome. I mean, we're not asking much of it. Obviously, we're not asking much of it, this car, but you can't help but when you get something new that's been made in a, you know, uh, something like made in China, and they say it's for the Australian market because they're making a ute, you can't help but be skeptical. Well, have they actually done a good job in making it do what people want to do with it? So part of me would be like, we could have got it today and I wouldn't have been surprised if it would have just got stuck straight away on that hill over there. So when it does stuff like this, I'm like, oh, well, it does actually have some capability to it, which is cool. All right, so here's a bit of a rut that I would struggle most dual cab utes. Well, she's trying. Nah. I did notice the traction control did take a second to react to being stuck, but once it did, it would lock the wheels up and get you going. Almost kind of stuck. And you gotta remember, that, like, these are modern dual cab utes. They're not Nissan Patrols, they're not 80 series Land Cruisers, they're not live axle stuff. So I wouldn't buy this car expecting it to be a rock crawler because that's just not what it is. It's designed for people who have to go, you know, drive to work every day, go to the shops, but they still want to get out and do camping on the weekends and that sort of thing. And because it's an EV, it's obviously fast. Zero to 100 in about five or six seconds. So watch this. Oh my God! <laughs> that is so fast. Like, it's actually crazy to see uh, that car go that quick. I tell you what, I'll give uh, Macca's Farm Ferrari a bit of a run for its money, I reckon. <laughs> oh, that is incredible. <gasps> you actually have to, like, brace yourself and hold on to the wheel because it's that quick. Oh, that is so fun. I mean, obviously, there's not heaps of situations where you'd actually need that much power off-road, but I'll tell you what, having it is awesome. And it's so cool because it's an EV, but you get the, you know, the practicality of having the combustion engine in the front. So you know you've got 800k of range, you can fill it up like normal, you're not going to get stuck at one of those stupid EV chargers running off a diesel jenny out in the desert. It's, to me, this is the practical way to do EV at our current point in technology. I'm sure, you know, once tech gets better, they'll ditch the engine out of the front of this. But for now, we still need, you know, combustion engines to make these things practical. And you've got this huge, like, infotainment screen with maps and all your car stats and whatever you want. But what you can also do is press this button here, and the whole screen actually rotates 180. So, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Bit of a gimmick, but it is cool. <laughs> Also, heads up display, you can see all your stuff like uh, what tire pressure, if you're in EV mode or if you're on uh, petrol and EV mode. All the, all the stats are there. You also got a heads up display in the glass. Apparently you can do turn by turn directions, all that stuff too. It's got your downhill assist, which has actually worked pretty well when using it on those steeper tracks. It's also got this button here, which enables the, the uh, actually the, the generator at the front. So you press that in. And now the engine starts up. Ah, you can, can hear, hear that. The engine. Let me... So now you'll hear that 1.5 litre turbo petrol motor running and then I can press the button to turn it off and off it goes. It's really cool how you can just flick it on and start charging the car and like I could see someone at camp right, oh let's go cook someone on the induction cooker. Alright, turn on my, my generator. Generator's in the car. Yeah, You know what I mean? Crazy. Like I think for camping <laughs> it could actually work really cool. Uh, 
Yeah, it's, and nice and quiet too, you know, like. That's and that's why I wanted to come out and see this car because this is the first fit. This is the first one of these in Australia, mm. and um, I just I honestly do think this stuff will end up being in the future. Like you see, the writing's on the wall for all the other car manufacturers. You're seeing Toyota investing heavily into hybrid technology. Ford Rangers coming out with something similar to this really soon as well. I think especially when regulations start clamping down on, you know, My 80 Series and Liam's Old Patrol, all those old diesel cars, they're going to get kicked off the road one day. I just yeah. see it happening. And um, to be out, like, I just think this is the future. And if they can get the reliability there, I don't think it'll be bad. It'll be very comfortable. It'll be very mm. nice to live out. It's just if the reliability's there. One thing I do want to mention, I don't see this car running in 30 years' time like my current Land Cruiser does. No, that's it. Exactly I was like, right. they're... they're I mean, one of the things that the reality of this car is, is software updates. Um, we don't know how frequent they're going to be, but we all know that eventually software becomes, you can't just software update for so long. Eventually you've got a hardware yeah. update, you know? Like with iPhones now, people chop and change iPhones like once every couple of years mm. because they eventually kick you off because it's thing, too old. I sort of feel like I'm more in a gadget than a car with a soul in it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's an awesome car, but there's no soul to it. It doesn't have a soul. It, it, poor when thing, when poor I work on my idea. Land Cruiser, I feel, I don't know, maybe because it's the engine running and all the, the noise and the clunking gears. I don't know, you feel connected with it. Whereas this is a fantastic car and I actually really like it. It doesn't quite, like, I don't see myself going home and tinkering on it. Because you can't. Nah, that's you it. You can't. So, there are, but then again, that's all modern cars. Exactly so, right. It's our old things are a different beast. And if you'll, you'll have your hobby 80 series and Land Cruiser or whatever, and then you'll have your daily car that gets you around. And I feel yeah. like... Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, that's the future where we're heading. Mm. All right, can I have you, a drive? Yeah, you, I've been talking it. You get in. I want to drive. I'll tell you what, when you launched, it looks quick. <laughs> like, it looks proper quick. It felt proper quick. I think for a dual cab, it actually looks like pretty good. Like, there's no odd weird shapes. Like, they have, nah. it, you know, they've, they've tried to make it look good. There is obviously a formula for these dual cab utes that's most popular. That's why they all look the same. Yeah. Um, and when you try and do something really different that looks a bit funky, people aren't really a fan. So they've stuck to the formula, they've seen what's already here and what's popular, and they've just made it ever so slightly different. But I'll be very interested to see these. Uh, we were speaking to the guys and they said they were working on, you know, getting all accessories for these things. So like, you know, canopies, um, side steps, bull bars. I feel like that's always a thing we're waiting for to see what they look like when they're accessorized because it really changes the whole car. So I'll be interested to see what that stuff all looks like on it. And when are they coming out? Uh, these are getting launched for sale in the at the 29th of October, so end of this month, which is pretty crazy. And then, if you buy one, you'll have it by December this year. So before Christmas, you could be driving one of these. They were saying that the production in China is like crazy. They can yeah. pretty much. They'll have a thousand of these things here at the drop of a hat if, if that's if on the, the boat, there, at the factory, you know? and here yeah. in Australia, which is crazy. Yeah, pretty crazy to think. Now, obviously, the one thing with electric vehicles, um, and especially you know modern cars is how they're going to be long longevity wise yeah, and, exactly. and how they're going to perform in harsh off-road climates yeah like river crossings stuff out in the high country dust getting everywhere mud getting everywhere how's it going to hold up we don't know and that's the scary mm. part we really like these cars i mean this one does have like bash plates all under it so like in terms of protection for the battery and the running gear it all seems pretty well protected but obviously that doesn't stop moisture so and we don't know how to what extent have these cars been tested so the age old question is would you buy one and as we were saying before with the price if that was the price of this thing that could be really cool the ride is very impressive i wasn't expecting it to be that good like i guess my expectations were not high for this car at all i'm gonna be honest yeah, exactly like, right. i thought something coming out of china it's probably gonna be pretty crap yeah um but like i've been blown away by how well this thing drives how like responsive the steering feels how good the suspension is yeah it's really um like nice to sit in we've into. driven some nice cars like we drove the ineos that's like a hundred and twenty thousand dollars yeah exactly right. dollar car. like we've driven something that's meant to be you know pretty nice and this thing at the price point which they're saying is which they're not, they're not telling me price but he gave me hints sort of and we think it's around like around what a ranger xlt would be which i think is yeah. like below 70k like at that yeah. like lower 70k mark which yeah. is insane Funnily enough to say, like you wouldn't, like it's a big step from like a GQ, but as a daily driver, like I could see myself having a car like this. I know, that's what I mean. Like I really didn't come into looking at this car thinking it'd be any good. I was more thinking, oh, the technology is really like, I want to learn about FEP. I want to see how it goes actually having a plug-in hybrid car and using it every day. But I wasn't expecting it to be as good on the, both the interior comfort wise and just rideability. It's pretty, like if this is what the future looks like, and it's like, and hopefully it only gets even better than this, then 
Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. It's going to be a really interesting next few decades seeing where this electric theft hybrid technology goes. Honestly, for the first one that's ever been in this country, I'm super impressed with not only the capability of the car, but the practicality, how it drives. Um, I think they're going to be quite popular in the future. And I think this is, whether I like it or not, this is where we're probably going to be heading. But I want to hear your guys' opinions. Let me know in the comments. Do you think theft hybrid technology is actually we're gonna work in this country, or do you think it's just a fad? I'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave them in the comments, I'm gonna be reading them all. But yeah, I think this technology could well and truly be the future. And if this is the first one, well, it's only gonna get better from here. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, get subscribed, and we'll see you all in the next one.